Chapter 1.1 The Structure and Function of the Skeletal System Part 1 So in this video we will look at the names and locations of the major bones in the body and we'll also look at the functions of the skeleton. So we'll start off then by looking at um, a diagram of the skeleton. As you can see the human skeleton is made up of loads of different bones of different shapes and sizes. In fact within this, the human body there's over 200 different bones and these can be found in the axial skeleton which is the central part of the skeleton is used mainly for support so things like the ribs, the vertebral column, uh, the cranium and we have the appendicular skeleton which is all the remaining bones that then join onto the axial skeleton now when it comes to remembering all the bones there's, there's 19 different bones that we need to know for the exam so I'm going to teach them in, in three different parts so first of all we've got bones that are found centrally so if we start from the top then, um, we've got the cranium, um, which you will know as the skull, but it's important that we don't use words like skull in the exam and we use the, the correct anatomical name for it. So we have the cranium, we then have the, the clavicle, which is what you sometimes refer to as your collarbone, and that's just located just in front of the shoulder at the front of the body. We then have the scapula, which again you might refer to as... Um, your shoulder blade and that is like the one that sticks out at the top of your back uh, on both sides we then have the sternum which is the bit that runs just straight down the chest we then have the ribs which we'll all be aware of um, but these come in different pairs we then have vertebrae which are a series of individual different bones uh, that make up the vertebral column or what you would sometimes perhaps uh, refer to as your spinal column and then finally we have the pelvis so within that central area we've got seven bones that you need to remember the cranium, the clavicle, the scapula, the sternum, ribs, vertebrae and the pelvis moving on to the next section then there's uh, six different bones within this particular section um, and this is all the bones that are found in the arm. So first of all, we have the humerus, um, and the easy way to remember that is a lot of people call it your funny bone. So when you, you know, when you give it a bang into something, it actually really hurts. So I'm not quite sure why it is called a funny bone, um, but the actual anatomical name for it is the humerus. We then have the radius and the ulna, which make up the lower arm. Now. It's really easy to get these two middle modeled up. So the way I try and remember it is um, the L in ulna stands for little. So the bone that runs alongside the little finger in your lower arm is the ulna. So if you can remember the L in ulna standing for little, and you look at the little finger and watch the bone run alongside that little finger, that will lead you to the ulna. So if we know where the ulna is, the opposite bone across from it is then your radius. We then have what we call carpals, these are the small bones uh, that are situated just between or just after the radius and ulna at the wrist. These lead onto slightly bigger bones which are your metacarpals before leading onto your fingers which are known as phalanges. So in this particular section we've got the humerus, the ulna, the radius, carpals, metacarpals and phalanges. Moving on then to the final section, these are bones that are found in the leg. So at the top of the leg we have the femur which is the biggest bone in the body. We then move down to the patella which is what you might refer, refer to as uh, your kneecap. We then have, you know, similar to the radius and ulna, we have two bones in the lower uh, part of the limb and we have the tibia and the fibula and the tibia is the bigger bone out of these two. Moving down the leg from the tibia and fibula we then have the tarsals which are similar to the carpals in the wrist. These are um, small strong bones um, that form the ankle joint. These then move on to metatarsals which you may have heard of um, as, as it's quite a common injury that footballers pick up. Uh, and then this word again, phalanges, these are the same as uh, or similar build to your fingers. So in this section, just to recap, we have the femur, the patella, 
the tibia, the fibula, tarsals, metatarsals and phalanges. So it's important with the bones, not only do you know the correct anatomical name for it, you also know where these bones are located. So make sure that when you've, if you need to look back at this video, uh, to not only remember the names, but where they're located, make sure you do so. Moving on then, um, it's important we actually know the functions of the skeleton. So what does the skeleton actually do? Well, it has six main functions. These are support, posture, protection, movement, blood cell production, and storage of minerals. So, the skeleton actually provides support by holding our organs in place. So, within our ribs, our rib cage, we have our heart, our lung, our liver, our kidneys. They're all tightly packed together and held in the, within that area by our skeleton. If we don't have our skeleton there, when we move around, our heart and lungs would be all over the place. It also provides posture, allowing our bodies to take up different shapes. So if you think from a sporting point of view, there's loads of times, and if you think about in gymnastics, or if you're taking uh, a free kick in football, or where you pass a ball in rugby, you have to take up certain shapes in order to perform that particular skill. And that is done um, through our skeleton providing us with posture. The skeleton also provides our vital organs from injury. So we've already mentioned um, our heart, our lungs, we've got our brain in the top of our head. Um, all these, particularly when we're taking part in sport, are susceptible to, to impact. So it's actually our skeleton uh, being made up of very hard, tough bone that protects these particular organs from the impact that the body uh, encounters. Another important function of the skeleton is movement uh, and the way our skeleton allows us to move is by it provides areas for our muscles to attach to the bone and then when these muscles contract they allow the bones to act as levers and then create the movement in our arms and our legs and the rest of our body that will allow us to perform different skills in sport. They also produce red and white blood cells uh, which are important because uh, the red blood cells uh, are used to carry oxygen around the body and white blood cells help fight disease. And the final function, uh, the skeleton also stores minerals such as calcium and iron that are used by the body. So there we have looked then at the, not only the, the names of the bones but where the bones are located and we've also looked at the functions of the skeleton. What I need you to do now is to fill in your task sheet and make sure you fill in every question to the best of your ability. If you need to watch the video again to make sure you understand it and you've learnt all the names and locations of the bones off by heart, then feel free to do so.